Logical fallacies are flaws in reasoning that weaken an argument. They're often used to persuade or sell without evidence, and they can be quite convincing. My name is Melanie Teresa King, and I'm a science and critical thinking educator and the creator of Thinking is Power. In this video, we're going to cover 10 common logical fallacies in alphabetical order. Get these under your belt and you'll be well on your way to spotting misleading arguments. Latin for to the person, the ad hominem fallacy is a personal attack. Essentially, instead of addressing an argument's substance, they attack the source. The ad hominem can take many forms, from attacking someone's character, to questioning their motives, to accusing them of being a hypocrite. For example, Mr. Smith says we should study for the test, but he wears socks with sandals, so he doesn't know what he's talking about. Ms. Johnson says we should eat our vegetables, but what does she know? Her handwriting is terrible. I bet she can't even read it. At its core, the ad hominem is a diversion tactic. It's easy to attack a source. It's much harder to address the substance of an argument. Importantly, name calling and insults aren't ad hominems. They're just rude. It's only fallacious if it's used to discredit an argument. So you're blonde isn't an ad hominem. You're wrong because you're blonde is. The appeal to authority fallacy claims that something is true based on the position of an assumed authority. The most common example of an appeal to authority is when the supposed authority isn't an expert. For example, celebrities and influencers might endorse diets, supplements, and beauty products, but generally speaking, they aren't health experts. Sometimes the authority is an expert, but in another area. Importantly, experts are only experts within their area of expertise. For example, a heart surgeon isn't an expert in climate change, and a physicist isn't an expert in cancer. The point is, when an authority makes a claim, it's important to ask whether they're in a position to make such a claim. Expert testimony is valuable, of course, but only within their area of expertise, and they should always provide evidence. The appeal to emotion fallacy uses emotions to persuade. This fallacy can be really effective as emotions drive much of our reasoning, often without our awareness. This fallacy is a broad category that includes appeals to any number of emotions, from negative emotions like anger, jealousy, fear, pity, shame, hate, and disgust, to positive emotions like happiness, hope, courage, and love. As you might expect, this fallacy is common in advertisements, politics, and propaganda, as emotions are an easy way to manipulate our reasoning. For example, imagine the sadness of not having the latest smartphone. Get it now and feel complete. Or buy cookies from our fundraiser, or you'll feel guilty for not helping us. Importantly, the use of emotions in and of itself is not fallacious, as they can be relevant to an argument but it is fallacious when emotions are used instead of evidence. The appeal to the masses fallacy or the bandwagon fallacy argues that a claim is true because a lot of people believe it's true or conversely, a claim isn't true because a lot of people don't believe it. Humans are social animals and it often makes sense to accept what the majority believes, but popularity doesn't determine truth. A lot of people can be and have been wrong. The majority used to believe the world was flat and that the sun revolved around the earth. The appeal to the masses fallacy essentially boils down to peer pressure. For example, everyone is on this certain social media platform, so you should be too. Or millions of people believe in this conspiracy theory, so there must be some truth to it. The point is, the truth of a claim isn't determined by its popularity, but by the evidence supporting it. The false cause fallacy asserts that two events are causally connected when they aren't. Let's unpack this a bit. A correlation is when things or events occur together, whereas causation means a change in one thing directly causes a change in another. But just because two things occur together doesn't mean one caused the other. Sometimes there's something else causing both events, and sometimes it's just a coincidence. For example, I wore my red shirt yesterday and I aced that test. It must have been the red shirt. Or black cats bring bad luck. One crossed my path one morning and later that day my mom yelled at me. 
Remember, just because two things occur together doesn't mean one caused the other. Look for other explanations and evaluate the evidence. The false choice fallacy oversimplifies a complex issue into two options, ignoring the possibility that there might be other options available. In this fallacy, the arguer frames choices as black or white. Binary thinking is seductive. It's simple, uncomplicated, but the real world is shades of gray. For example, you're either with us or against us. Either study medicine or be a failure. Buy these sneakers or you'll never be happy. Go to the party or be labeled as boring. False choices are often the result of a lack of knowledge and strong emotions, which can lead to overconfidence and even extremism. A false choice essentially shuts down debate and forces the opponent into the arguer's preferred position. But the majority of the time, there are more than two positions available, so don't let someone limit your choices. The false equivalence fallacy argues that two or more things are the same, despite having important differences. Comparisons can be a powerful way to understand new concepts. While superficial similarities are often easy to see though, they might be masking important differences, and if we're not careful, we could be misled. This fallacy often oversimplifies a comparison by exaggerating a shared characteristic, downplaying important differences, or removing essential context or nuance. Or in other words, comparing apples to oranges. For example, Stealing a candy bar is just as bad as stabbing someone. They're both breaking the law. Or lying to your mom about not eating breakfast is just as wrong as lying about cheating on a test. False equivalences can be convincing because it's often easier to see similarities than it is to analyze how things are different. So if someone makes a comparison, stop and ask yourself, are there important differences that would invalidate the conclusion? The red herring fallacy attempts to distract from the main issue by bringing in irrelevant information. The name comes from a story in which smelly fish, red herring, were used to distract hound dogs by covering up a scent. While the story may or may not be true, it can be a helpful way to visualize how this fallacy works. Essentially, this fallacy diverts and distracts. They lack a good response, so instead they change the subject. For example, a teacher asks a student about their disruptive behavior in class, and the student starts talking about the pizza they had for lunch. Or a dad asks his daughter about why her chores aren't finished, and she starts to talk about his favorite team's performance in the playoffs. To spot a red herring, notice if the response is related to the original issue, and pull the conversation back to the main issue at hand. The single cause fallacy oversimplifies a complex and nuanced issue into one simple cause. Our brains generally prefer simple answers to complex ones, but complex issues often have many causes and oversimplification can lead us astray. If we want to solve problems, we need to fully understand them. The single cause fallacy can take many forms from assigning blame to giving credit but it's fallacious because many factors likely contributed to an outcome. For example, the reason I failed the test is because the teacher doesn't like me. Or the only reason we didn't win is because the referees were biased. Ask yourself, could there be more to the issue than what is being presented? The slippery slope fallacy argues that an action will lead to a chain of events resulting in extreme and undesirable consequences. Slippery slope arguments argue against the issue at hand by diverting attention towards negative and unlikely outcomes. But moderate positions don't necessarily lead to extreme outcomes. For example, if I let you stay up an extra 15 minutes, you'll never go to bed on time. You won't be able to go to school in the mornings and you'll never be able to keep a day job. Or if I let my hair grow just a little bit longer, I'll be mistaken for Rapunzel and asked to let my hair down for rescue missions. The good news is slippery slope arguments are easy to identify and avoid once you learn how they work. So ask yourself, how likely is it that the action at hand will lead to the outcomes that are being presented? That's it. 
Master these 10 fallacies and you'll be able to protect yourself from the most common misleading arguments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more critical thinking content, be sure to check out thinkingispower.com and follow me on social media at thinkingpowers. Thank you.